Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So here we'll be doing a complete topic walkthrough on graph transformations and what exactly will come up. And later on, we'll also be working on five past Excel questions that came from the IGCC and GCC papers. So without further ado, let's see what kind of topics actually come up in graph transformations. Now, firstly, and our three, we're going to look at translations. Yeah, and this, and this is just another word for how the graph moves left to right. One more thing, the notation used is always in terms of fx. Sometimes they might use trig notations like sine, cos, tan x, or they might use normal polynomials like x squared equations or x cubed equations, or one of x equations and so on. Now, translation for this one where, where I said shifts on the y-axis, what this means is that if you had any normal function, fx, let's just call this fx, yeah? And if I said, okay, I want you to translate by fx plus 5. This plus 5 means that this curve is going up by 5 units. So it appears something like this. Everything goes up by 5. Now, another one could be shifting on the x-axis. And what this could mean, and this is an example, is that the whole graph moves left or right. Now, notice the notation here. Yeah? It says if this black line was the original function, what this means is that if you have a negative sign, you do the opposite. If I said 2x, you'd half. If I said plus 60, you move to the left. If I said minus 50, you move to the right so and that's it that's translations for you now for the next ones we have reflections yeah and this one works kind of different if you had a normal function like this the black line fx and i said okay minus fx this means you're going to reflect the y coordinates because this is a reflection of y remember y equals fx so essentially all your y coordinates have been reflected so in other words if you had one two the two would become a minus two if it was minus three it becomes plus three same thing appears for the x ones, yeah? So if you had a normal function and then they said minus x inside the bracket, you deal with the x coordinates. So likewise, if it was 3, 4, you look at a 3 and you change it to a minus 3. And if you do it for all the coordinates, it will look a bit like that. Notice how it kind of also wrote, flips on the y-axis. But my tip is always flip the coordinates and the graph should fix itself up. So now let's move on to the third and final part, which is stretches and shrinks. Now this is another word for enlargement, guys, yeah? And what it's telling us that if you, again, you had a regular function here by the black line, and we had some sort of like co like coefficient, some kind of value in front of fx, like 2fx, this means that you're going to stretch the y points by whatever value this is. So 2fx means you're going to double all your y coordinates, yeah, by two times. So if your y coordinate was 1, you double it and you get 2. If the y coordinate here was like 2 here, it will be on 4 and so forth. Likewise here for the x ones, and just like the other ones as you're probably used to it now, if it's inside the functions, you always do the opposite. So I wrote bx, so this means you're going to shrink by b. So if it was 2x, it means you're going to divide the x values by 2. Just look at the sine wave for a second, yeah? If, if the x, if the black line, if the x coordinate is 180, this may, and this was, um, let's say, three, um, let me see, let's say 2, yeah? If this was uh, 2x, this means you're going to half this to 90. If it was 3, you're going to divide it by 3 to 60, and so forth. And that's it, guys. That's literally all you need to know. And sometimes in the exam, you might get a mixture of all these three types of, sh of shrink, stretching and shrinking, reflections, and also translation. So, well, let's take a little break here, and I'm going to see you guys in a minute with the main questions. Ciao. Okay, let's begin guys. So in this question, it says on the same axis, sketch the graph of y equals f, the function at x minus 2. So since we got a curve here, which is, at, which is pretty much called y equals fx, all we go to do is um, do something to the x-axis by two points. So when it says x minus 2, we always think the opposite for x. So instead of moving 2 to the left, we're going to change this to x equals plus 2 for everything. So the whole graph shifts two corners to the right. So at 0, 0, this means x is now at, at 2. If the corner is here, it shifts 2 across. If it's 2, it shifts 2 across here. So that's what they want. And then we just update these values. And then we just kind of closely sketch it. And, 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 and yeah, any other points you can kind of think. So for example, this is now going to be something like this. And it's going to shift upwards like that. So something along the lines. Now, next one says B, give the coordinates of the point where your curve 
crosses the x-axis. Well, this is straightforward. It only crosses the x-axis over here. So that's going to be at the point 2, 0. And that's it. Here is the graph of y equals sine x for x between 0 and 360. Okay, so here's your graph here. On the grid above, sketch the graph of y equals sine x plus 90. Okay, for 0 to 360. Alright, so what is this telling us? And this is very specific because they even tell us where you should sketch it between. This x plus 90 means that this entire graph has shifted by 90 degrees. Now, the question is, is it left or right? The trick to remember, if you remember this general form, f x plus a, when you when you write like this, you always shift to the opposite sign. So if it said plus a, it's going to shift to the left by minus a, yeah? That's what it means. It's kind of like when you're solving quadratics. If you put in a bracket, your answer is always opposite. So if it said x plus 90, shift to the graph by minus 90 degrees. Moving this graph 90 degrees to the left, we look at each point. This point goes here now by, to minus 90. 90 goes to 1. So actually, I'm going to just change the color of the pen. Uh, 180 here goes here now. 270, which is over here, goes here. Uh, 360, move here. Okay, and now we can just kind of predict it. So I just literally mess this up. So we've got this, this. So it looks something like that. Okay, so just carefully sketch it long. And you can kind of guess what the next one is. It's going to, of course, shoot up to here. Now, for this kind of question, it says sketch between 0 to 360. So in other words, we can't sketch anything less than. Because if you do, you might get penalized. I don't know. But my tip is stick to the range they want, which is from 0 to here. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. In the range between 0 and 360 for x, the graph of y equals sine x over 2 plus 3 has a maximum point A. Okay. Just let's understand this maximum for a second, yeah? A maximum means the highest um, point on the curve, like here. So the maximum of sine x would have been um, when x is 90 and y is 1. That's an example. They want us to find the maximum of this point here, of this curve. Now the trick is, when you write like this, it, it can be done super easily. This plus 3 means that the y uh, curve has gone up by 3. So now instead of it being at 1, it's going to go up by 3 points higher. So the maximum will now be at something 4. Okay, so that's a y coordinate for a second, yeah? As for the x coordinate, it gives us a hint. So remember how for sine x plus 90, we do the reverse. Here you do the reverse as well. If you divide them by 2 it for inside the bracket, it's like you multiply x coordinates by 2 instead. So all the x values are now multiplied by 2. So that means if the original maximum point was 90, if you double this, you're going to get 180. So it's going to be 180 degrees. And that's it. I mean, visually, if you want to know what it looks like visually, let's just pretend this is 4 for a second, yeah? This means that the old x value has been doubled. So instead of hitting at 90, it's going to now hit at 180. Instead of hitting the, uh, the x-axis at 180, it's going to hit at 360. And so on. So you can kind of see it's like a massive change. But yeah, so the answer you want is 180 and 4. Okay, now in this question, it states that we need to determine whether this function y equals f at the point x plus 1, all of that shifted by minus 2, has any real roots? If so, write down their coordinates. Okay, so this curve here is the is explained by y equals fx. Okay, and it tells us according to the statement that we need to firstly shift something with the x and then shift something with the y. So remember, when it's outside the function, it deals with y. When it's inside the function, it deals with x. So it tells us right now that x is shifted by minus 1. So we think opposite. And y shifted by minus 2. Okay, so it's always good to do arrows actually. Yeah? So just shifted by minus 1. So look at this curve. We just shift all the corners by minus 1 and then down 2. So if this was here, we'll move 1 to the left and then down 2. So it should be here. If this was here, it shifts 1 to the left and then down 2. So here as well. As for this one, it shifts 1 to the left and down 2. So Basically, for these kind of questions, it's good to kind of see what it looks like. So this means the curve is now something like this. And it's kind of a U-shape like this or something. Okay. So determine whether uh, this has any real roots. If so, write down the coordinates. Now, now it's a bit tricky because it's somewhere along here. Yeah? And I guess another way we can also look at this. You see this point over here? It's kind of same thing. Yeah? So this point so shift to the left down to so this is one of the corners 
and over here it shifted the left one by one and down two so it should be what well, should be there actually so that means this should be like something like here so that means the two coins it actually hits is the points where it hits the x-axis at minus four and minus one so x equals minus four and x equals minus one and that's it guys that's all they really want now for part b it tells us to estimate the minimum point of the graph of y equals f x minus 4 plus 1 now let's just make a new one here yeah? so i'm going to use a blue pen so this means now that the x corner has gone up has got as it has um moved to the right by plus 4 now yeah whereas y has gone up by plus 1 so going back to the original one so here's the original one let me just delete this one actually so now x corner here has gone 4 across would be 1 2 3 4 this one same thing so it should be here and um the, and it's gone up by plus one as well so increase both these by one so it should be it should land over here so and now for this other point here let's have a look this is also four to the right so one two so yep here add one same thing here this is at minus three add four should at, be at one add one one three okay so the curve looks something like this now it's asking you estimate the minimum point okay all right just to be clear the minimum point is basically like the, the bottom of the curve now just looking at it carefully it looks to me like if i was zooming in it's kind of halfway through in it so like two blocks down so it should be like here okay so i said guys always try and see carefully where it hits so the minimum point here is here so i think the minimum corner for this point would be minus uh, it will be a 2.5 yeah and this is like what is that it's like here ish isn't it what's that so somewhere between these two let's just say it's, it's close to it's, let's round it up yeah so it's going to be on this line so i'll just make it clear let's just say it's here for sake convenience yeah so it'll be so it's going up in i'm guessing 0.1s so this means this should be 0 0.8 so the corner for this uh, point should be 2.5 0 0.8 and that's it that's how you pretty much deal with these kind of questions with these graph transformations so the graph of y equals fx is shown on the grid okay so it looks like we've got a parabola a nice quadratic curve yeah now part a on the grid above sketch the graph of y equals the function at half x okay so there's a few rules for this one and this is actually a really nice way of doing it when you get a function of say ax all that literally means that you got to divide x coordinates by a and if you got something like x plus a you subtract so in essence whatever is inside the bracket inside a function you do the opposite way it tells you literally here whatever they tell you do the opposite so if it said 2x divided by 2 3x divided by 3 because it's half x divided by half or opposite times it by 2 that's the same thing dividing by half times it by 2 is the same so essentially, for every x coordinate here on the graph, we're going to times it by 2. So let's have a go. So we can say that this coordinate here, which is, by the way, minus 1 for x, is going to go appear here now at minus 2. This coordinate here, which is at 0, stays at 0. This coordinate here, which is at 1, is double to 2. This coordinate is at 2, doubles to 4. Uh, this coordinate here, which is at 3, doubles to 6. Just find anything that intersects this corner at four stretches to eight this corner at minus two doubles to minus four um and that's it now all you want to do is just get rid of all of these um, pen marks well i do at least um, and now just connect them up so you're gonna get you have to get a parabola so it's gonna be kind of hard okay and that okay so something like that nice <laughs> hopefully smoother curve than this guys yeah okay let's look at next bit so the graph of y equals f x plus k so it's essentially what i said here so if it's x plus a you subtract x coordinate by a so subtract by k okay so we can see that i'm guessing it's the same curve here yep it looks the same Fi write down the value k so let's see where it moved. 
So let's ha let's just let's just um, focus on this right hand side. Yeah, see how we get how we got to zero. So we traveled from three. Yep, so easy. You move three across. So k is gonna be three. So a curve has equation y equals fx. There is only one maximum point on the curve. The coordinates of this maximum point are 4, 3. So x is 4, y is 3. Write down the coordinates of the maximum point of the curve using the following two. So we just need to be comfortable with transformations here. Yeah? So it's telling us in the first transformation that we now have fx, which becomes fx minus 5. So inside the bracket, when this is x minus 5, we do the opposite. We're now going to add every x coordinate by plus 5. So this means we look at 4, 3, just add 5 to the x coordinate, and it's going to become a 9, 3. And that's it. For the second part, it says 3 times the function. So since y equals that function, we're going to multiply all the y terms by 3. So looking at this coordinate again, times the y coordinate by 3, we're going to get 4 and 9. Yep, and that's it for part A. Now moving on to the next part. It says here is the graph of y equals a times sine of bx for x range of x value between 0 and 360 degrees. Now, ooh, okay, we've got this kind of sine wave graph, but it looks kind of upside down. Find the value of a and the value of b. All right, so to do this, we need to first remember what a sine wave graph looks like here. Yeah? So what I do is always sketch it to the right, like something like this. And we know that it's a wave sine from 0 one shift and another shift here where the maximum point here and the minimum point here matches at 90 degrees this intersection is 180 degrees and the minimum is 270 and it ends at 360 okay so looking at both graph for a second on oh yeah, yeah one more key key aspect is that the maximum on the y-axis is one and the minimum on the y-axis is negative one so this is going to literally give us an indication how to solve this one now looking from at your original sine x graph and comparing it to this other shape, you can see that instead of going upwards, it's going downwards. And notice how it stretches all the way to 2. Well, this means that actually that the entire sine wave has been inverse, so it's actually a negative sine x. But because it's going downwards and it goes down to 2, it's been, it's been um, scaled by 2, by scale factor of 2. So we know straight away that a must be a negative 2. Okay, so because it's been scaled by 2 times. Now, as for the loops, Notice how they just we just do one loop up and one loop down. We've actually done how many loops? One down and one up, and another one, two, and three. So actually we've done this three times to get to the to get the 360. And because you've done three loops, this means that the, the value inside the bx must be a 3x. So b is three. And that's it. These are your two answers.